introduction chit fund organization functioning and regulatory aspects as famous phrase goes necessity is the mother of invention the development of chit funds in india has a same kind of story the beginning of chit funds relate to the times when some poor farmers in kerala were thinking of a way to get loan but they didn't had any security to be given against that then they had this idea all the interested farmers came together and gave a fixed amount of their agriculture produce of same kind to a chosen person this person collected the agriculture produce from all the farmers and then took out a little portion for himself after that a draw was taken out and the remaining amounts of agriculture produce were given to the draw winning farmer like this the system continued until all the participants got their turn this system benefited the farmers who get early turn in draw and had gained more than what they had for selling and thus became rich the chit fund act 1982 is applicable to the whole of india except the state of jammu and kashmir we are going to understand what a chit fund is its functioning regulation and many other facts related to it after starting this module you shall be able to understand the main business of chit fund organizations understand the role of chit fund organizations in the financial system evaluate the difference between the chit fund organization and other banking and non banking institutions know about the regulatory and supervisory norms governing the chit fund organization main business of chit fund organizations working of chit funds in chit funds the investor gives an amount at specific time period usually a month up to a fixed period usually the number of investors is equal to the number of months for which money has to be given this collected amount of money is taken as a common fund and the amount so collected is given to one of the participants of chit fund usually selected through a lucky draw otherwise an auction can be made for the allotment of the collected amount it is referred as reverse auctioning the basis of such allotment is the lowest bid that is the participant who accepts to take the lowest amount out of the collected fund is given the first chance and now the difference between the selected participants bid and the full amount due is divided among the remaining participants however even after this the winning participant has to continue investing let us understand it with an example suppose a particular chit fund company gives 70% of the gross amount of total chit fund contribution by each participant now suppose there are four participants contributing rupees 4000 for four months so total amount of contribution comes out to be rupees 16000 per month among the contributors if more than one contributor is interested in taking up the minimum amount that is 70% of 16000 or rupees 11200 are conducted to select the winner if no one is willing to take the minimum sum a reverse auction is conducted where participants bid for lower amounts that is they start from rupees 16000 rupees 15000 rupees 14000 and so on the person bidding the lowest sum gets the money the difference between lowest bid and total contribution is given to the remaining members after deducting the fee of the foreman chit fund is a good savings instrument for small investors it can be a reliable source of funds in an emergency next role of chit fund organizations in the financial system chit fund is a very unique system of borrowing and lending created by the people of rural india it is a unique body of borrowers it is a unique system in which money is generated from within the group members all of whom will once get the chance to borrow it thus chit funds are playing a major role in satisfying funds of many people it provides an opportunity 
to save as well as borrow. The importance of CHIT funds role is due to following reasons. The CHIT fund schemes are fully self-financing. They do not rely on any kind of external help from government or any other body for any kind of financial needs. All the investors have equal right, contribution and participation in the system. The CHIT fund system is a very simple method to be understood by rural people as it was originated by them only. It is an easy, simple and uncomplicated technique. CHIT funds cater to the need of the rural as well as urban middle class people. They meet their specific needs for education, housing, agriculture, occasional. These schemes are playing a major role in pooling of funds in rural India. Although urban India is not away from its reach, here the four men pool small savings and act as trustee for all, ensuring fair turn of each member by rotation cottage industries, etc. and medical expenses. They are not interested to be paid by borrowers. These schemes are source of employment and income for many people. In Karnataka, the CHIT fund has provided direct employment opportunities to over 35,000 people. Difference between CHIT fund organization and other banking and non-banking institutions. CHIT fund started long before banking and non-banking institutions came into existence. There are various differences between CHIT funds and banking and non-banking institutions. Contributions in CHIT funds are recurring, whereas this is not always the case with banking and other non-banking institution. The deposit in a bank can be withdrawn partly or fully at any time. But the subscriptions in a chitty cannot be withdrawn before the termination of the chit fund period. From the point of reach, chit funds have wide reach in India than banking due to the unorganized sector of the former. Customers can avail overdraft facility in banks but not in chit funds. Even after the enormous expansion of bank branches all over the country, Still many rural people are away from banks. Next, CHIT funds and NBFC. There are many differences between the CHIT funds and NBFC. NBFCs offer all sort of banking services such as loans and credit facilities, private education funding, retirement planning, etc. which are not provided by CHIT funds. NBFC are registered under Companies Act 1956. There are various kind of NBFCs such as Equipment Leasing Company, Hire Purchase Company, Asset Finance Company, Investment Company and Loan Company. Above mentioned NBFCs are registered with RBI but CHIT funds are not so registered. Interest on investment is predetermined by NBFC. Next is regulatory and supervisory norms governing CHIT fund organizations. Regulation In India, CHIT funds are being regulated by various central laws and state laws. The CHIT Fund Act 1982, it was enacted to provide for the regulation of CHIT funds and for matters connected therewith. It was formed by the union government. However, there are various state laws also which govern the functioning of registered CHIT funds in their respective states. Some of them are Kerala, Kerala Chitties Act 1975, Tamil Nadu CHIT Funds Act 1961, the CHIT Funds Karnataka Rules 1983 etc. Next, Registration of CHIT Funds. A CHIT Fund is registered with the registrar of CHITs of a particular jurisdiction. For forming a registered and organized CHIT fund group prior approval of registrar is required by submitting an application along with a fee of Rs 50. Then the company is required to file a CHIT agreement with every member in that particular group. The fee for the purpose is around Rs 20 per member. Once the CHIT agreement is filed and approved, the certificate for commencement of the scheme is issued. 
the chit manager needs to deposit 100% of the chit value with the registrar prior to the commencement of the scheme. This deposit will be refunded to the chit manager on the successful completion of the chit cycle. The chit fund company can run many such groups. For each group, approval of bylaws and commencement certificate from the office of the registrar, chit funds is must. The share of a subscriber in a chit is also known as ticket. Next, regulatory and supervisory norms governing the chit fund organization. As we have discussed till now that chit funds companies are governed by both the chit funds act 1982 as well as various state acts. But now we are mentioning some of the regulations and norms of the chit fund act 1982 that are applicable to all. First, no chit shall be commenced or conducted without obtaining the previous sanction of the state government within whose jurisdiction the chit is to be commenced or conducted or of such officer as may be empowered by that government in this behalf and unless the chit is registered in that state in accordance with the provisions of this act. Second, no person shall issue or cause to be issued any notice, circular, prospectus, proposal or other document inviting the public to subscribe for tickets in any chit unless such notice, circular, prospectus, proposal or document contains a statement that the previous sanction required under section 4 has been obtained and the particulars of such sanction. Third, every chit agreement shall be in duplicate and shall be signed by each of the subscribers or any persons authorized by him in writing and the foreman and attested by at least two witnesses and it shall contain the following particulars namely fourth every chit agreement shall be filed in duplicate by the foreman with registrar fifth notwithstanding anything contained in the companies act 1956 one of 1956 but subject to the provisions of this act a company shall not commence or carry on chit business unless it has a paid up capital of not less than rupees one lakh sixth every foreman shall after all the tickets specified in the chit agreement are fully subscribed file a declaration to that effect with the registrar to get certificate of commencement seventh no foreman other than a firm or other association of individuals or company or cooperative society shall commence or conduct chits the aggregate chit amount of which at any time exceeds 25000 rupees eighth a chit agreement shall not be altered, added to or cancelled except with the consent in writing of the foreman and all the subscribers to the chit. Ninth, copies of chit agreement must be given to all subscribers. Now let us recapitulate what we have learned so far. Chit funds are one of the oldest system of borrowing and saving in India. They involve pooling of money by some group of people for their benefit. The main principle of chit funds is self-reliance. In fact, chit funds are famous even among those people, I repeat, even among those people who are not known to banks. Chit Funds Act came into existence in 1982 as an enactment of Government of India. Different chit funds operate in different ways and there are also many fraudulent tactics practiced by many private firms. The basic necessity of conducting their operations is a group of needy people called subscribers. Foreman is the person responsible for collecting the money from subscribers, presiding the auctions and keeping records of subscribers. Thank you.